Hello and g'day. Today's video is about using faux postage stamps. You've all seen these absolutely amazing faux stamps. Everybody has been making them at the moment. If you've got magazines, you've been cutting them out. If you can draw freehand, you've been drawing them. There's so many different varieties of these little faux stamps. I've made this sheet of faux stamps up. It's my freebie. It's a gift for everybody. No coupon codes needed. It's just a straight out download. No jumping through hoops. You can just get on my website, go to the download tab, and download this. So it's like a gift for Mother's Day, if you like. There's 24 stamps on this sheet. I've prepared them all individually over time. Some of them are portrait and some of them are landscape. Now, for those who don't know, portrait is facing like tall and landscape is across that way. So that's portrait and that's landscape. I've even put in two blank ones so that you can go ahead and either freehand draw something on there or you can stamp something on there or you can fussy cut something out like this and put that on there. Today we're going to work with fabric, we're going to work with paper, we're going to work with stamps, we're going to do some blending with the distress inks. What else are we going to do? We're going to put some stamps on some envelopes. We're going to use pinking shears. And we're even going to make these into some tickets. So we'll be able to have a strip of tickets. And if you wanted to, you could make them into a snippet roll. So we're going to use these in quite a variety of ways. So let's get stuck into it. Now to cut these out, you can cut them out like this using your postage stamp scissors. So they're a postage edge stamp and they look like this. So the scissors look like this and the postage stamp once it's cut will look like this. So we'll start off with the little blank one. Now I'm going to do some freehand drawing. Now I know freehand is not for everybody so I'll use pencil first and I'm going to use a Copic multi-liner which is very very fine 0.1 and I mean it's really really fine. I'm going to start off by using antique linen. I'll prepare my stamp so that it's not just stark white. Now if you've got a postage stamp scissors, the edge part for your scissors, this will work out pretty good for you because you can make as many blanks as you like. With this one I'm just going to go straight in and not worry so much about doing a pencil line first because this one's pretty easy. So I'm just going to draw a vine that's going to come from here. I'm going to draw a squiggly line and it'll disappear off there. So just a squiggly line. I'm going to draw tiny little oval shape, shape leaves. One on each side. So a little oval there and there. They don't have to be even or neat, just as long as they represent a little vine. See that? So you can just do things like that to get some leaf shapes on your stamp. You can go ahead and, and put as many as those on as you like. Now for this little one here, we'll do just a, a shape coming from the inside of the stamp and I'm going to do a line like that 
I'm going to do a leaf shape here. I think I might do another one up here and another one off the edge a bit. I'm going to do some random bells, just some rough shapes to get me started. In nature, we usually do things in threes or fives. So I've got some rough shapes there. So what I'll do is I'll do my leaf first with the leaf. So I'm coming in, just putting a light vein up the center of that leaf, doing a bell with a little squiggly line at the bottom. So there's nothing really fancy. You know, look, I'm, I'm not an artist by any shape or form. So I'll let that dry before I get my rubber out and rub out my pencil lines. I can use the second colour of the vintage photo. And all I've done on this one was get a white gel pen. This is a, a jelly roll. 10. Now I like this particular gel pen because these work really well on black paper. Once you've colored up your stamp you can come in either with a black marker or your white and just draw around the edge of whatever it is that you want to draw around. I'm not going to draw it on that one because I've already got one and I just wanted to do that just to show you that there's another way you can add some doodling on your stamps just to make it look a little bit different again and uh, overlay it on some fabric. Okay, so I'll clear this out and we'll go on to the next one. Now I'll show you how to do one in a color. So this is our vintage photo with just the edge done and I've stamped a, a plain black little floral stamp on that. So these are done with the pinks. So on this one I've used three colors. I've used the tattered rose, the Victorian velvet and the spun sugar. It's a really small stamp to be blending three colors. So this one here, I done two. The colors are different. I like the tattered rose because it's got a brownie tone to it. Just get some tattered rose and you can, say if you want it dark at the bottom and light at the top, start at the top. So my inks are running low. So I'm not going to get a very strong color anyway. So if you've got a tattered rose that's got a lot more ink on it, you're going to get a different color to me. So there's the tattered rose at the top. Now I'm going to use the, I'll use the spun sugar because it's going to give me an entirely different look. So I want you to be able to see it and I'll put that at the bottom. I'll start working that up and I'm going dark at the bottom and I'm blending it in the middle to meet. I'm going to turn it around the other way and I'm just going to use the side of my tool just a little bit rather than laying it flat like that. I've got it up on just its heel and I'm just blending it in into the middle. So there you've got a two-tone color and I've deliberately used two totally different colors so that you can see the blend. And what you could also do is then stamp over the top. And there's also nothing wrong with highlighting that stamp again and just do your edges with uh, the vintage photo or a walnut, whatever your favorite color is, use it to work in with everything else. So see how that's just highlighted it a little bit. If you want more, put it on your mat. I got rid of some of that color and just, just ever so slightly, I'm only using the edge of my tool, 
just come in and just put a bit of color on the very very edge it's only a small stamp so don't come in too far and just give it another variation now I'll just get my inks ready and I'll show you how to stamp using the small stamps on your stamp now let's say you've got a page ready to put in your signature a tea dyed page and I've stamped a little fairy at the bottom a little fairy in a garden scene with some flowers and I want to make a stamp to put on a cluster or something like that I want to be able to put that put it on an envelope anything at all I just want a matching stamp I'm going to lightly color around the edges now I can mask out the edge of this paper stamp here and just get some of the flowers here and stamp or I can use the fairy I can do whatever fits whatever works so all of that fairy won't fit on there and either will all of that so you pick out what part that you want to be on there and then you just mask out the rest you can do either you can get a piece of paper and mask this area out so let me show you that just to give you the idea and you would put that on there and then whatever you stamp is only going to go inside that area there so you know you're not going to mess up that's one way so you're blocking out everything else the other way is to actually block out what you don't want to stamp directly on your stamp here to do that you need a little sticky note or something like that so let's use a sticky note and I'll just take off one sheet and I'm going to block out her legs for one I'm going to rip that off there and I'm also going to block out well I'm, I'll leave that little bit there because I don't think that's going to hurt because it sort of looks like a flower and I'm just going to block that out so you can see I've blocked out a lot of stuff I've just got a little bit of flower and that there so I'm going to carefully keep that in place when I put my ink on here it's going to make a mess and I'm going to take that off because otherwise I'm just going to put that black stuff on there anyway I don't want that black ink on there so I'll remove that there's no ink anywhere else and I'll just you got you got to be careful when you do this because you can't see where it's going to go so it's a bit of a guessing game so just guess it you're in the right sort of place your stamp might come up with it and just take it off and you've got a matching stamp for your page this one here was just a, a very plain simple little floral stamp I'll, I'll put it on here just so you can see it I'll do it here quickly before I move on and I'll just stamp that on there and I've got myself a little pink stamp so it's pretty easy just to use tiny little stamps to make tiny little stamps now I'll clear up and get ready to show you the next one if you've got a tear ruler whether it's a purchased one or a homemade one mine's homemade a little bit rough but it does the job you can use your tear ruler to go around the edge of your stamps so you can get your sheet of stamps so you have a bit of a plan when you do this so I'm looking for something that the teeth that are a little bit smaller so I'm just going to hold that down firmly with my left hand or my dominant hand and I'm just going to rip up you sort of got to get it a bit persuasive 
and rip it like that. It does, it does work okay. So then I'll come back that way. It's a bit easier this way to go with the grain of the paper. And I'm going to use those small teeth again. And I'll try and pick a different area of the ruler so it gets a little bit more random. And I'll take that piece out. That looks pretty cool. So holding that down again there. And I'm trying to get it reasonably even around the edge of the stamp. So there is my very roughly cut stamp. So I'll colour the edge up just to give it that aged look. You want something different? Try this one. So if we put that on here and put some cancellation stamp, maybe even some cloth or something underneath it, whatever it needs. A, a stamp on a stamp always looks good. This is just craft paper. Cut your stamp out and I've stamped some lace ink on that. So this one here is out of my, out of my, I've got these in my shop, these blank ones. So they're just all different colors and all different patterns and, and styles, and three different sizes. They're just a little bit different to these ones I'm showing you today, but these are great for backgrounds. I've been using these a real lot. And you put it down like that. Instead of picking it back up so you don't lose where you are, you can always just put your glue there like that to hold it in place. Same with that, just a, a bit of spot gluing. Same with that. Do some spot gluing just to get it down and hold it there. And when that's pretty much dried, I've got to get rid of that glue now. And when that's pretty much dried, you can come back in and touch it up with the edges, you know, put some more glue under these edges. But that will stay there enough now for me to come back in and, and glue it down properly. Now here's another variation of this same little fish one. What I've done with this one is I've, I've actually cut the whole edge away and I've just left with the tiny little fish. You, you know, you can do whatever you like. You don't, you're not setting concrete with these and you've got an adorable little stamp just by doing that. You know, you two for one. So yeah, throw some colour on the edge after you've cut it out and glue it down, tea stain this. This is a, a like a 100% cotton and you can grab this from Spotlight in Australia and just put that down, whether it be on an angle or straight. It's so little, I'm leaving that one like that. And you can also use that with the tea dye as well. This is the cheesecloth. It's a, it's a, a very, very thin cheesecloth. I just tea dyed that today. That will also work well behind it. Very, very ocean looking. Just snip away at it because it's pretty, it pulls away. It's pretty stretchy. You only need, you know, so much of the middle of it. It looks small when you're like that. But then when you start to glue it down, you just feather out these edges. And I've got no colour on that cotton, but I like the contrast between the three, the stamp, the cotton being plain, you don't have to dye everything. I'll get the next one ready for you. I made these ones into little tickets. On the sheet, if you look at this side here, there's five straight in a row that are in the portrait position. You can turn them into tickets. So just get your ruler and if you haven't got a see-through ruler, just use your pencil and just measure out and mark, you know, just two millimeters, not far. Two millimeters, there, 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 and there. Just a little way out so that you've got a little wide area outside of your stamp. So I'm going to use my ruler 
to get that area marked for me and cut down here. The same width on the other side. And that space there is enough for this space here in between each stamp. So I'm going to come up, instead of coming narrow like I've done here, I'm going to come up a little bit higher. So it's giving me the same amount of space between the bottom and the top on this one. So come up a little bit higher on the top and the bottom. Now all you need to do once you've got your strip is start folding. So fold in between halfway. I can see through my paper to see where the top of this stamp is and the top of that stamp is. So I'm going to make them even together and just lay that down there and put a crease in. You can use your bone folder, turn it around and if you're left hand or right hand, doesn't really matter. And just do that. So I've folded halfway between the two stamps. I'm going to do the same on that one. I can see exactly through the paper where the stamp starts and ends. And just fold it and crease it. And do that right to the end. Okay, so now we've got the fold lines there. Now it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to perforate in between the stamps. I have seen people use their little stitch markers. I personally don't like these once they've been perforated. These ones here I just used my marker and put little black dots there and it just gave the look of a perforation line. Because it's folded, it's got that crease there. So we can either use that if you want to. Really, it doesn't do anything because we're not going to tear these tickets off. So it's up to you. You can... You can use a, a guillotine. I've got a guillotine that actually does a perforation. Or you can do what I'm about to show you. So first off, we are going to punch our little holes in. So I've got my hole punch here. This is a... How many millimetres is this? I'm going to have to write it on the screen. I don't know. So it's just a little hole punch. And let's do the ends first. Put your two ends together and just cut out that tiny little bit there off the corner. Line it up. Just use your eye. Just go to that first fold line and cut the corner off as well. Keep doing that all the way down. Fold, cut the corner off. There's the start of our tickets. And we'll put a bit of colour on it. Using the vintage photo again, fold it end to end and just do your edges. Turn it over and do your edges. Now if you want to take all the white off you can go ahead and and certainly you know murky them up even more. If you want no white on the back you could print these on tea dyed paper you could print them on anything. Now you can see the difference where I've put my little ink marks in between the tickets and I've just used my Copic multi-liner very thin you can use a, a black pen you can use whatever you've got so I'll use a black pen just in case you haven't got a Copic marker find the center 
Put your first dot in the center. Second dot just away from the edge. Just away from the edge. Now find the center again. Center again. Center again. Center again. Center again. And you'll get even holes all the way across. And they're just like fake rip holes or perforation lines. Now that's how you can make yourself some tickets. And they actually fold up nicely into the tickets. Just put some more distress ink on if you, you know, you don't want to see any of that white. And they slip into some little tuck spots and use them on your, your snippet rolls. Have fun with these ones. Let's move on to the next idea. If you have only got pinking shears, you can use pinking shears to cut these out. So if we just go here, I, these are quite a big zigzag and they are a big zigzag for a small stamp. So I'm going to cut this one out to make it easier so we'll just go here first down two sides then across the bottom and across the top so there it is using a zigzag I'm not even but I don't use these at all to make these types of stamps so if you had a smaller zigzag, it would be much better. So that's what that looks like if you use a zigzag scissors. The next method is to just cut them using a straight line. So just use the straight edge of your ruler and hold them down as you cut them. You've got a straight line cut. Now these stamps are perfect for making tags. This tag here is a tag I've made myself out of manila folder. I've ripped off a piece of fabric just off this piece here, glue it down on the tag, cut a hole in it and put a new reinforcement decoration piece on top and then just glue all your bits and pieces on top whatever style of tag that you want to make. This one here I've made the tag upside down and it's also a sewing theme and I've done it in the blue just to give it a bit more interest. So it's just a piece of serviette on the bottom. I've done it in layers. This is a pattern piece. Bit of lace under there punched a tiny hole in the top to hide the string and just leave that to either hang upside down or tuck it in a pocket. And this one here is a tag that I've made. I said earlier that there was a bit of a story behind this little stamp. This is just a, a photographer's photograph. It's not real. When the post first started, it was established in 1913. In the very early stages of the service, people used to send their children through the post. So this photo was made because of that. So it didn't take very long for the government to figure out that people were actually sending their children through the post. They were putting stamps on the children or tags of some sort and they were paying a fee for them to be sent. So as soon as that was figured out, they bought in the rule that there was no way that you could send children through the post anymore. So that, was, that didn't last very long, needless to say. So look it up, do a Google search. It's a very interesting story. Now I've made some envelopes as well got these envelopes out of my mum's stash and they're that old that they glued themselves shut. I tea dyed them 
and just cut a little slither off the top so I could turn it into a pocket. So I've put the same postage stamp on this one with a bit of lace underneath and I just randomly stamped all over the front of it and that's in vintage sepia. That's the ink colour. So that turned out pretty cool too. This one here is a craft paper and it's just a, a square envelope and I use my blank stamp underneath as a base, a bit of cloth here that's just a cotton cloth with some distress ink on it and the ripped stamp that I used with the tear ruler and just some cancellation stamps on top. This is a recycled paper it's or a handmade paper if you like. This was also mum's and it's got a lot of pink through it so I put pink distress ink on the outside and she's pressed a flower and put that in the corner. So I used the pink stamps and put them on there and randomly stamped all over the front of that as well. And that can either be folded in half and put in a journal for a page or it can be just slipped into a pretty big tall journal. So there are so many different ways that you can use the little stamps. Have fun with them download your your printable cut them out however you like whatever method that you've got straight cut zigzag or a postage stamp edge i'm donna thanks for watching and bye for now i wish i was above the center of attention but i'm not i wish i didn't have to give into the pressure uh oh